today I'm answering another one of your questions. And again, I highly appreciate you leaving a comment and, uh, and giving me a really great idea that I think a lot of other men are certainly going to relate to because it's one of the reasons, if not the main reason, why so many men turn to the dating communities to be able to make the necessary changes that they need to have a better and happier life. So, so many men, I think when they're younger, get told or are influenced in whatever way, don't talk to strangers, you know, or don't talk to women, you know, because you're going to interrupt their day and stuff. Or maybe they have spoken to strangers or women that they like, and it just hasn't gone well. And so that has stuck with them for the entirety of their lives. And it doesn't even have to necessarily be experiences that they had when they were younger. It could have been maybe when they were in their teens or maybe uni years or early adult life as well. But I'll read you just the question that the um, uh, the guy had left me. And this is um, uh, this was a comment from a guy called Gar3830. So if anything, thank you so much, my friend, for leaving this comment. Because, yeah, it's uh, an issue that I think, again, so many men do have. And he put, it would be good if you could talk about why it's so difficult for men to relate to women and apart from social conditioning, because since I was little, they told me not to talk to a girl because it was not normal. I don't know why they educated this, but yes, this was, uh, this meant that my childhood was horrible. So the thing with, I think, uh, the issue with guys is that when you've had a bad experience, it certainly stays with you for your entire life. And as we get older and we kind of get a better understanding of the social ladder, you know, where we are in society or where we position ourselves in society, you know, you and in fact, you know, a great example of this would be in the group of friends that you have, there's probably someone who's somehow positioned themselves as the leader of the group. And then you've maybe got people who are like just underneath them. And then maybe you've got the ones who are just essentially the followers of the group. So you kind of develop where you are in this sort of social ladder. And I think when it comes then to people's personality and also their skills with women, they also inherently understand that there are men that are just really good with women. And then there are men who just suck at it. And it's very easy, I think, when we're younger to, when we've developed certain limiting beliefs because we're told don't talk to strangers or this and that again, then it can be very difficult to shake this ideology that, oh, I don't have to be in that box of being the person who struggles with women. I can actually develop my skill and I can be in the box of uh, guys who are really good with women. But doing that can then mean that you have to challenge those beliefs. And that can be a very difficult thing, especially I think when we get older and we do become more aware of our social position, um, we don't want to publicly humiliate ourselves or embarrass ourselves because then that can be deemed as something called social suicide. And that can mean then that we, if that happens, you can be completely like exiled out of your group or out of society, you know, and no one wants to be the uh, the guy who's now kicked out of their friendship group because they wanted to move up the social ladder. So guys are certainly inherently aware of that circumstance playing out. Whereas with women, women are a lot more social than guys, even from a very young age. And as they also mature much faster than men, uh, especially when they get to that kind of like uh, puberty kind of era, uh, it can mean that women really develop their confidence uh, and social intelligence and social awareness, whilst it still takes guys years to, to get to that point. So there's certainly a difference uh, on like a more psychological level of how men understand um, social construct and how women understand it. You know, women can be very uh, sort of fluid with socially connecting with people. They're very um, 
uh, empathic with being able to form connections. Whereas with guys, if you're kind of shunned, you remember it it stays with you. And that can then be where, you know, a trauma can develop because why would you want to go and embarrass yourself talking to women that you're attracted to if that means that you're going to be publicly humiliated? And unfortunately, you know, compared to really with what women get, women in a way do have it a little bit easier where, you know, when they're turned down, it's certainly not as harsh as how a man would end up experiencing being turned down by a woman. And a woman also has, or women also have uh, a better selection or opportunities than men when it comes to the dating scene. Whereas a man has to put in the hard work, he has to develop his confidence. And usually when he gets to that confident level, there's like a perpetuating cycle that plays out where his confidence gets in more women. And because he's, get, because he's uh, dating and meeting more women, that also somehow gets in more women, which then feeds back into his confidence. But so you have to kind of create this uh, kind of catalytic converter experience play out. But that can be very difficult if you aren't overcoming the limiting beliefs that you've got. So what can be done to overwrite that? Well, for me, after all the years of my time, certainly in the dating industry, uh, I think, and this is also why I moved into doing the integral eye movement therapy and really trying to focus more on the therapy work with guys, is where my understanding came into play of if you can remove how you feel about those past traumas, then it can at least be removing that brick wall or whatever barrier maybe you've got preventing you from at least trying to do more positive things for yourself. So let's say you've had uh, a bad experience or a few bad experiences of approaching women. Uh, maybe you were at a house party or something and you saw a, a cute girl you went over, you wanted to sort of like chat her up and she just did not want to have anything to do with you. And that was seen by all of your friends and peers and you were like, shit, I am so embarrassed. Right, I'm never doing that again. I, I can't, you know, that you feel that humiliation and that embarrassment and that anxiety there. And maybe if that is an experience for you, and in fact, what I'd love for you to do, which could really make this more realistic, is I want you to have a think about a bad experience that has happened to you that if you think about it, it will cause you anxiety. You can feel it like, like deep down, you can feel that anxiety sort of like being brought uh, uh, above level. And the thing is, is that if you, that that's, that's just a symptom and that's just your body reacting to a memory in a way as it's acting as if you were there but the reality is, is that happened in the past. That is not happening in the present. So your body, or in fact, even the brain is kicking in that fight or flight response and saying to you, no, you shouldn't do this because this happened many years ago and it was a terrifying experience and I want to protect you. I want you to be safe. But the thing as well is that the brain and the body can sometimes overreact because of just what it has learned because of previous experiences. So with something like the integral eye movement therapy, and this is what I do like with it, is just to remove that emotion from that memory, from that experience that you had. So if you have had some upbringing that has told you not to talk to strangers or not to uh, be sociable with people because something bad could happen to you. Or maybe you did have some more tra uh, traumatic event that's happened that really does make you scared to go and talk to people. Then what it is, is you have to face that memory that is affecting you. And you also have to change the emotion and how you feel about that memory. And when you do, Imagine then if those sensations, that anxiety wasn't there when you think about a really stressful thing that could happen in the future. 
it, the experience changes completely. And in fact, it gives you an opportunity to step towards that issue and challenge your belief and be like, okay, well, my body isn't giving me that level of anxiety that I had before. Yes, I'm nervous because I can't predict what is going to happen in the future, but I would be open to at least trying that experience and seeing how it plays out. So if you're someone who certainly does have what uh, what GAR3830 has experienced here of being conditioned at a young age to not talk to strangers or not talk to people, then as an adult, you're obviously going to have social anxiety. And one of the best ways to do that is certainly by either going to a therapist or actively going out and practicing and challenging those beliefs. And if you can't do that, then 100%, I think something like integral eye movement therapy can at least just take away that particular issue or barrier and then allow you to test the change, allow you to test those beliefs and see what the uh, the truth is because the real truth is a hundred percent you can talk to people you can talk to strangers people love meeting new people and connecting that is how romances and relationships are formed that's how new friendships are formed think about all the friends that you've got in your life at the moment how did you meet them you weren't friends the moment you were born into this world you developed a friendship and it can be difficult to remember how friendships start, but you've, once you've got something established, it's there. So if you're struggling with this issue, I highly recommend do reach out to me. Um, I do offer an integral eye movement therapy experience during a consultation session. So this is well and truly prior to having any therapy sessions with me. Um, and why not give it a go? And in fact, what I will also do at the end of this video, I'm going to put uh, a link to a video that uh, gives you the opportunity to experience um, maybe a, a more entertaining version of integral eye movement therapy. So do uh, consider it's not a full representation of what integral eye movement therapy is, but why not give that an experience? See what that's like. But otherwise, book a consultation with me and let me show you and let me help you to experience what it's like if you were to change those limiting beliefs or if those limiting beliefs weren't there stopping you from talking to people because I can assure you you're going to be an amazing person or you are an amazing person and don't be in your own way and stop you from meeting people you deserve happiness you deserve to make friends have relationships uh have lovers of sorts as well and um the only person who's going to be in your way is you here, but you can only overcome that if you take away those limiting beliefs and those uh, those symptoms of those traumas that you had in the past, uh, because there's no point living in the past. You're living in the present, and if you want to move forward in the future, then you have to learn to let things go, and the only way you can do that is by actively doing it. So, I hope this video was useful for you. If you can, please like the video, leave a comment as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well as if you have other questions about your limiting beliefs or how maybe life coaching or integral eye movement therapy, or maybe just questions about me working in the dating industry for the last 15 years could possibly help you, then do leave a comment below. But otherwise, if you can subscribe to the channel, um, I need your help to be able to grow this channel even more so I can bring in more guests, I can make more interesting videos, and certainly I want to be able to help more men with their anxiety and their dating lives too. So again, thank you very much for watching and uh, till the next video.